Hi everyone and welcome back. It's me again, Ian, back for more Audi TT Mark II fixes, mods and upgrades. In this video, what we'll be looking at now that the 17Z Brembo's and the Forza two-piece rotors have been installed, we'll be looking at doing the brake bleed procedure. But first, let's not forget, I've got the master cylinder that I need to upgrade before anything else. We're going to start in nice and close to the area that the master cylinder is in on a right hand drive vehicle. And as you can see here, it is quite a tight fit and I'm having a bit of a hard time trying to undo the cap there, but it's just a matter of getting a good grip and unscrewing it all the way. And once the cap's off, you're able to undo the sensor plug there. Best tip that I ever learned is to pull on the little tab, but then push the plug towards itself and then pull to release it. For changing the master cylinder, you do have to get all of the brake fluid out. So here's where a suction vacuum unit comes into play, or you can just use a syringe. Now it's super important that you get as much of this fluid out. As we know, the brake fluid is actually very corrosive, especially if it gets on the paintwork and sits there for a while. So this just makes it a much cleaner job once you go to remove the unit from the vehicle. Once all the brake fluid's out, it's a good idea to just wipe everything down. Now this is the unit that I'll be upgrading to, so it looks very similar, but there's this specific marking that you want to be looking for, and it says 25 on there, which is dictating the size of the piston. We'll have a comparison in a bit, but this is just the replacement o-ring that you want to order as well. Now I've actually skipped a lot of footage just because I spent a lot of time just trying to figure out how to get to the nuts that I needed to undo, which I'm pointing out here, which hold the master onto the brake booster. Those are the two nuts that need removal. And you can see how many other hoses that I had to undo just to be able to get access. And finally, I'm showing you here how I remove the whole unit as one after undoing the hard brake lines that go into the master cylinder itself. So here's a little bit of a walk around of the master cylinders. There's the 23 mil in the background and the 25 mil in the foreground. Underneath there's a little switch or a little sensor that is the brake light sensor there. Now you can see here on the side that there's a little, uh, sorry, on the top that there's a little blank flat spot on the 23 mil master. But on the 25 mil master, there's a 25 on there. In this shot, I'm showing you the differences in the piston size. So on the right with the O-ring is the 25 mil one. You can see it is a little bit bigger. On the left is 23 mil. So what is a master cylinder? It's the device that helps to convert your foot pressure. So the pressure that you're applying to the brake pedal into hydraulic pressure. And it's this hydraulic pressure that helps to push the brake pads onto the rotors. Okay guys, so after a little bit of struggle town, the master cylinder is finally in. I've put the reservoir back on, um, but I do want to show you something that I uh, came across. It was quite challenging in putting that reservoir back in properly. Now, the way that the manual states to remove the fixing bolt to then lift the reservoir up and out of the master cylinder seems very simple, but if you have a look and see where this bolt is actually located, it is quite out of the way and very, very difficult to tighten up. The way that I've got it on there right now, it is just hand tight, um, but just to show you how difficult it is, I'll uh, show you with the one that I've got off, which is the older 23 mil master. So that's the master as if you're looking at it from the side, but looking at it from the front of the car, that's kind of what you'll be 
seeing um, in the engine bay. So you can see this is where the two fixing nuts go, as I pictured, um, and they can be secured uh, first without the top reservoir in. Now the issue comes when trying to get this bolt in and out. So you saw in my video that I took it out as a whole unit, but putting it back in, it's much easier to be able to tighten up these bolt uh, nuts and tighten up the um, brake lines here and here with that reservoir off. Now the issue is when you're putting this back in, you've got the strut housing in the way, you've got this brake line in the way, and then getting that in there in the first place is also really, really difficult. And then tightening it up while it's in the car is also really, really difficult. Obviously when it's out, that's super easy. But what I had to do was literally try and get it in there with a magnet first. That was hard enough in itself. I kept dropping it down the chassis rail. Then once it was kind of in there like that, I kind of just got in there, pushed it with my middle finger and all I could do was hand tighten like this. So you can see how difficult that is already. And it's pretty much in as much as I could hand tighten it, um, which was not much at all, but you know, it's the best that I could do while it was in the car. So now for this next part of the 17Z brake upgrade, I'm going to be bleeding the brakes. So what I've done is I've hooked up a couple of lines from each side of the caliper into a container. Uh, I'll just be doing a vacuum bleed on each side just to make sure fluid is um, flowing through and there's no leaks. And then at the end of the video, I'll do a VCDS brake bleed as well, just to make sure all of the air is out of all of the system. Uh, because the master cylinder was changed, I do really need to be thorough with the brake bleeding. Right, so just a quick overview here, there's my little funnel that's directed into the reservoir. So that's all nice and full, as you can see. What I like to do with the, um, the bottle of brake fluid is poke through two holes in there so that one pours and the other one can be sort of like the breather hole so it pours through nice and smoothly. Now from the reservoir, remember we've taken off um, the master cylinder and so all of that needs to be bled down to the calipers. And so going down to the caliper, I've got, that's the line up there which I've changed in the middle here with the um, flexible line from the 3.2 and then it comes down and across down to the hard line that then has screwed into the caliper. So if you've not seen the video where I changed the lines and changed the calipers, you'll see that from behind. Then I've hooked up, uh, sorry, then I've hooked up two lines to the top bleed nipples here. Now it's important these bleed nipples are at the top so that all the air can come out of these uh, calipers. I've already started the one side, but what I'll do is I'll show you how I bleed them with a vacuum bleeder uh, with this front one, just uh, so it's easy to see. And what I'll do is have this, this is still tight, so I'll crack that loose. Then I'm gonna connect this clear line to the vacuum bleeder here. Now this is gonna get a little bit noisy, but you'll see that the fluid will start to go down when I start getting fluid coming out of here and into the bottle. So I'm just going to set the camera up um, on the top of the engine so you can see the fluid getting sucked in and the fluid reservoir's level lowering while the fluid is getting pulled through the lines and into the caliper and back out again. Now I've got the compressor hooked up to the vacuum bleeder and it's sucking air from the caliper and you can see that the fluid level is going down here as the 
fluids being sucked through the reservoir, through the master cylinder, through the pipes, and then finally through the brake calipers and out to the other side where the vacuum bleeder is. Here I'm just testing out the function of the brakes and you can see that I'm getting uh, my helper, which is my dad, to press on the brake pedals while the video is recording the action of the brake pads and the one that's closer to the engine is actuating but the one that's closest to the outside of the car is not. So, the brake fluid hasn't run through the calipers properly and the bleeding hasn't been done very well. The nipple's locked shut, so okay, you... Come. Yep. So just a third of the way down? Yep. At this stage, I've resorted to doing the manual brake bleed with two people. So one person's pumping the brake pedal in the car while I'm so loosening down. the bleed nipple and then tightening it up again in different stages. Pump again. And then, okay, yeah. One. This time pump to halfway. Yeah, that's really hard. Hold it. Yeah, holding it. Yeah. Is that going down? Yeah. Not far, but slow. That's right. Pump. Are you, are you holding it? Yeah. That should be going down. Yeah, that's going down. A lot? Uh, more than the previous one. Okay. All the way down to the floor. Pump. Uh, yeah, should be hard. Pumping and holding. So ah. at this point, I've kind of realized that something's wrong and the, br the brakes aren't bleeding properly. And so it's time to troubleshoot Going and down. I'm pretty sure that at this stage the crossover pipes are blocked. Okay, yep, so I can definitely see that one side has fluid coming out of it, while the other side, the side that's closest to the camera, is bone dry. And when you take a closer look, you can see exactly why. It's completely blocked. <laughs> while the other end of the crossover pipe is nice and clear. So of course I've got to clear and clean out the crossover pipe. So here I've just got a coat hanger and I'm just trying to loosen the debris or whatever it is that's in there with it. And then I'm going to use compressed air to hopefully get that stuff out. There we go, there's some of that crud coming out of there in slow-mo. <laughs> okay guys, so now we know that's all good. The uh, both sides of the calipers on left and right have now been bled and there's no more air bubbles coming out. This is through mechanical bleeding and using the, su the suction pump as well as the manual sort of like one guy in the car pumping the brakes um, and then the other guy loosening the 
nipple. All the air bubbles are out and now what I'll do just for references sake is open up VCDS and use a VCDS break bleeding procedure. First up we'll just go through what's required. So you need to hook up each break nipple. So if you've got regular calipers you'll just have one um, nipple hooked up to the airline down to your reservoir, just a jar there. For calipers that have double nipples, hook them both up. So they're closed at the moment. You wanna do this to both sides of the car. As you can see there, both nipples hooked up down to the bottle there. And then what we wanna do is fire up VCDS to then use the sequence that's in the brake or ABS module. So what I'll do is I'm just going to leave the camera, one camera here and I'll get the head camera on so you can see exactly how much work is needed to do the VCDS brake bleeding procedure, which is especially going to be helpful, especially if that master cylinder or the ABS um, pump has been run dry. First thing to do is access the module 03, which is for ABS, so your brakes. Once in, we want to access basic settings, so number four. And then you click on the drop down menu. Next thing to choose is brake system bleeding, as you can see in the screenshot there. Once that's been selected, the top half of the screen starts telling you what to do. So the first step is to press the pedal and hold. So you want to go ahead and press firmly on the brake pedal and what you're going to hear is the ABS pump being activated by the VCDS. Now I won't edit or cut out any part of this sequence just so that you can get a really good idea of the actual time that it takes to do this. Next step is to release the front left and front right bleed screws, so open those up. Throughout this whole process, you also want to be checking the level of the brake fluid in the reservoir as you don't want it to run dry halfway through the process. So it looks like my cable got unplugged or something that it's become unresponsive. So this is actually a really good thing that's happened because you can see that when you go back into the ABS module, it does pick up from where it's left off. So if this does happen to you, all you need to do is make sure your cable's plugged back in properly and then access the ABS brakes module, go back into your basic settings and choose the brake system bleeding option again. This next step is saying to pump the brake pedal 10 times with the caliper bleed nipples closed. So yeah. gotta close them up.
All right, so now that's done, it's time to press on off next button to show the next step. And now it's actually reverted back to where I should have uh, picked up from. Now I've got to open the bleed nipples. At this step, pressing on off next will activate the ABS pump again. But this time, because the bleed nipples are open, the fluid's going to flow, as you can see. Pressing on off next brings up the next step, which is pressing the brake pedal 10 times, this time with the bleed nipples closed. So go back out again and close the bleed nipples while also remembering to check the brake fluid reservoir level. Damn. Now that brake fluid reservoir is a little bit low, so I'm just going to be taking this fluid that's come out. It's pretty clean, so I'm going to just pour it back in until the fluid level is nice and high again. Fluid levels are being checked, so it's time for the next step for the VCDS brake bleed procedure, which is to press the pedal 10 times with the bleed nipples closed. So we go ahead and close the bleed nipples. Now, if you think this process is a little bit lengthy, it can be, but it's a very, very thorough and foolproof way to make sure that the system has been bled properly. I've never finished a VCDS brake bleed and not have had a good brake feel. So if you find that your brakes are really, really not getting hard after doing a manual bleed or any other type of bleed that you have done, and you've not done a VCDS electronic brake bleed, then definitely consider it because it might be your only way out from not getting a hard pedal. So all brake nipples are now tightened up and closed. Time to head back to the computer and activate the next step. While pumping the brake pedal, you should feel it start to get a better brake feel. So it's getting a little bit harder each time you go through this sequence. Once pumping the brake pedal is done, we press on off next for the next step which is press and hold the brake pedal. During this step, what you'll feel is the brake pedal buzz and it'll rise up because it's pressure building up against your foot. Next step, release the brake pedal and open up the brake nipples.
Once all the nipples are open, we go back to the computer and we activate the next step by pressing on off next. ABS modules being pumped again, this time no foot is on the brake. Following that step is to close the bleed nipples again and then press the brake pedal 10 times. If at this stage that you find the brake feel isn't improving, you might need to do this cycle a few more times over and over again. The first time I did this, I actually let the brake fluid run dry and so I was doing this cycling of the brake system bleed for about 45 minutes. Still can't believe how good this brake assembly looks. <laughs> look at that six pot caliper and look at those rotors. They look absolutely amazing. Let's just hope they perform as well as they look, hey? Now the brake nipples are closed and the reservoir is nice and full again. It's time to move on to the next step. Press the pedal 10 times with the caliper bleed nipples closed. Now by this stage, the brake feel is nice and hard. You can see that I had to brace myself against the seat there. So it's feeling good. Once you're happy with the brake pedal feel, then exit out of VCDS. Once again, if the brake pedal is still soft, just keep repeating this cycle. Remember how in the dry fit video, which you can see the link for up the top of the screen there, how I said that I needed to either grind away the caliper or get a spacer, I ended up deciding to just get a five mil spacer here, which gives plenty of clearance. And of course I wasn't going to leave the calipers bare silver, so here's an Audi Sport sticker that I'm going to apply. Fortunately, I noticed that before placing the sticker fully onto the caliper that the dot of the eye was missing. There you go, that's where I've noticed that it's missing. But luckily, with the sticker kit that I bought, I got six transfers included in the kit. So luckily that this side went pretty smoothly with the sticker application. The other side, I ended up using the rest of the transfers because I just was not happy with the straightness of the placement of the sticker. Applying the sticker is quite forgiving as well. 
I found that if you apply the sticker very lightly on the edges, you're able to pivot it to get the alignment correct. Look at that, that looks absolutely incredible. So we're almost there and it's time to put the wheels back on. Finally, I've got the wheel back on and I'm just doing a little test rotation here to ensure that there's absolutely no fouling of the caliper onto the back of the wheels. Lastly, I'd like to thank you for hanging in there. I know it was a little bit of an epic journey, but I hope you found the information valuable in upgrading to the 17Z Brembo 6-pot calipers and also upgrading your master cylinder if you want to get the best brake feel without the pedal going too low before brakes actuate. Once again, thanks so much for joining me for more Audi TT Mark II mods. Before we go, please remember to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you can see when my next video comes out. In the meantime, hope you enjoy my content and I'll see you soon. Bye.